What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be showing you the best setup for Mikel Arteta. A lot of people ask me about this manager. Is he worth it? Is he not? To be honest with you lads, for 1500 coins, I would say wait and see what manager is going to be coming out. However, this long ball counter is always going to be the meta and I'm going to show you why with a couple of clips here, right? But 88 long ball counter plus one acceleration and plus one tight possession. You are essentially just getting 1500 coins on a manager so it is a lot it's very very steep but long ball counter will always be the meta for one very very easy reason and i'm going to show you that right here right i'm going to show you with a clip that we have when we win the ball back here right look how deep we are and then straight away into an attack and it's like one two three passes boom we're straight away first time pass another first time pass everything is rapid everything is quick everything is done at an accelerated rate and it's just simple. It's simple gameplay. Again, we've got another example here from out wide, which we can do manually to inside. It's all one touch passing. It's all central attacks. We're just kind of waiting for the players to make runs. And with long ball counter, the players make the most streamlined natural runs straight towards goal. Another example. Watch the minute we win back possession back. Look how deep we are, including Vieira, who's back here as our DMF. And we're going to show you the setups, right? There's three variations to the setups. There's sub tactics. But this is essentially why long ball counter is so easy and why a lot of the top ranks play either quick counter or long ball counter because of the attack patterns. One touch passes, simple walk-ins, you know, really, really simple goals, right? Now there's obviously, there is a skill in it. There is a skill in doing the one touch passing and stuff like that. But until the core gameplay changes, this formational setup, this style of play, and this way of attacking is always going to be the meta because you're super deep and you're not going to get caught in the counter too often. And then also, you're just literally four passes away from getting a shot on goal with the one-touch passing. That's so effective in the game, right? Now, I've done a video, a video on De La Fuente out wide, and that can beat this kind of counter-pressing and this very aggressive tactic. But essentially, you are going to have three varied setups of this. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. The players that you have at your disposal, the only thing to kind of really think about here is to not have two different types of players that are going to be like more than two types of players are two different play styles at the back or in midfield. So that's kind of the big thing here, right? Is what I mean is that like you're not going to have the same play style. This is very important when you're playing long ball counter, especially up here uh, with goal poacher that I found, right? You've got one deep line forward and you've got a center forward, right? So again, it's not a huge deal, but I usually try and have like a destroyer or else if I have two destroyers like Canavaro Maldini here, I do have a build up to kind of tie that in and be more naturally kind of like hold the line style defense, right? And then obviously you've got your defensive full back. You can apply whoever you want in here. If you want to take out Calafiore or you want to take out Paolo Maldini and put in Araujo, Tommy Yashu, Nesta, Bergomi, any of those boys. It's not really relevant to what you're using here. It's more about the positioning of the players. So this is the first varied formation here, right? And I'm going to talk about it just a little bit more detail. Um, but I'll just show you one more clip before we do that. Again, we're going, to lose, we're going to win possession back here with Petit. One pass from Declan Rice in here to Jorginho. And it's a simple tap in, right? Now why I showed you that clip and all the clips so far is that when you're playing long ball counter... The players run in very straightforward lines and they run the same lines the whole time. They don't kind of be flexible in their positioning, but mostly it's all got to do with this here, which is the team play style, long ball counter when attacking. It says players spread out to enable you to effectively use long passes to set up attacks. Every player, even players far away from the ball, will actively look for opportunities to rush behind the opposition backline to create scoring opportunities, right? That is going to be something that you need to get used to, but... The way that it's kind of described and defined here is not really how it works when you play a very narrow formation because you can see here that with this diagram at the bottom you've got like a winger on left or a left midfielder or a right midfielder that's going to be pushing the wing but when you actually take wingers out of this formation and this setup you are essentially going to be just very very tight at the back defending with like probably five or six at any given time depending on your setup and the variation you put into it and you're also going to be attacking with four every single time, right? So when we have this set up here, I won't go into the individual instructions just yet. I'm going to show you the three variations to this formation because they're all kind of similar, but just slightly vary depending on how attacking you want to be. So the first one that we're looking at here is very, very simplified, right? You've got your two holding DMFs, you've got one chaser and you've got one holder, right? This holder, Patrick Vieira, is going to have deep line on him. So naturally, when you're just playing your normal tactics and your normal formation set up as a 4-3-1-2, you've got really, essentially, a block of four back here that turns into a block of six when you're defending. 
So you were going to be manually defending and chasing with Makalele because he's got huge stamina of 100 plus or whatever it is. Big speed, big acceleration, very aggressive, very defensively aware, but can also bring and carry the ball forward. Now you can slot in anyone that you want there. Even Ambrosini could do a job as a box-to-box because -box, he's got that defensive engagement, speed, stamina, everything. Stevie G is another one. Um, but all you're going to be doing with Patrick Vieira or Reichardt or Zakaria or any of your anchormen, Rodri, whichever, you're just going to slot him in into this position from the rip, right? That he's going to be slotting back here into this position when you don't have the ball. And you've seen clips of that that I already showed you if you want to rewind back the video. And this has been a very popular one here where you're using Deco. You also saw a clip where Ambrosini finished off a chance um, with, a, with a simple tap in. You're using these two players here, Deco and Ambrosini, or whoever. You can put in Hoynes, you can put in Del Piero, you can put in Baggio. It doesn't matter who you're putting in here. Kaka, Iniesta, somebody that can run the ball, but is still kind of solid enough at the back if they need to go back to the back, right? But don't worry too much about the personnel. It's more about the positioning. Now, one slight variation to this, right, is for to drop this uh, other extra man here and essentially attack with five and defend with five. This is kind of the favored one of top rank guys that are looking to push rank and obviously you would take out uh the likes of cloud makalele here and you would put in one more all-rounder now valverde is one of my favorite players to use on my free-to-play account you could also use somebody with a little bit more directness attack a midfielder uh if you wanted to somebody that's got really good pace really good rapid uh you know passing or dribbling and good physical contact to be able to run it valverde is a good mix of that as well that he can still get back and defend it. For these two varied formations here, you are essentially going to have the same setup and the same tactics for both, right? So this is the tactic and the setup for both of these boy, these formations. The first thing we're going to do is individual instructions. Now, I know some people will argue that deep line is kind of counterproductive to what you're doing sometimes, but I always put it on my anchorman regardless because I just, I'm so used to the movement, right? Deep line is essentially going to mean that Vieira is going to pivot back. When the minute we lose the ball, he's going to transition from his attacking AI, he's going to switch to his defensive AI mode. And Vieira is probably one of the best in the business at doing that. So we're going to throw that on there. We're also going to throw on our defense here. We're going to throw counter target on whatever of our attacking or center midfielders we want to stay up. Don't mess around too much with your goal poacher. If you're playing two goal poachers up front, instead of Messi here, if you're playing a second goal poacher like Forlan or Rummy or any of those cards, you can literally use this on them. But I would potentially put it on an attacking midfielder to keep him in the position of attacking. Like, I don't want him coming back, right? We have enough. We have five defenders. We don't need any more than that. For the attacking individual instructions here, we're probably going to just put anchoring on one of the players because we want to keep them central. I would usually put it on uh, my center forward, whichever one you want. Again, goal poacher comes into it because their movement can get a little bit shifted, but that's something that you can learn the runs. And also, I would probably put defensive on one of my destroyers because obviously destroyers have a habit of pushing forward a bit more. If I'm playing two destroyers in my back four, even though we're playing four center backs essentially, I would always put it on my main center back that I want to keep back. So for this case, it would be Cannavaro. So that is the setup there that you have for that. And that's the same for the two formations that I just showed here. Either we have this pivot here or we have Makalele in here and we've got a double here with our two. Now, the last one to vary this and just have a slightly different individual instructions. And I've seen a couple of people use this as well, is to have your one man pivot here. But instead of this, you have your three center forwards. This is probably the most popular one, I would say, is that you have like a deep line forward here or any variation. Don't worry too much about the positioning, but you just have a flat here. So it's essentially kind of like the Barcelona style that they used to have under Pep or what they're kind of currently playing at the moment. You've got your three center forwards or your three players that can push in out wide. And then you're going to have three players that can score that can do it all. Usually people like to mix this up with something a little bit different. You don't need three players that are like Eto Saviola, Michael Owen, Messi, uh, Martinez. You need something a little bit different to throw at the opposition. So you could throw something like that. Every one of these formations that I'm showing you and the setup that I'm showing you, there can be slight variations. There can be slight differences to how you're setting up. Essentially what you're doing is you are trying to mimic this on the pitch, right? Now this is what it will look like on the pitch is you are trying to get as narrow as you possibly can and have a lot of varied formation there. With this then, you can also have a sub tactic, which is going to look a little something like this. If you have a center back or a DMF like Vieira, we have given him that he's able to play center back. But even at that, if you wanted right cards, you could put him in there. That your sub tactic is going to go into a flat four at the back with Vieira 
bringing up as a fifth center back, right? This is probably more important if you're playing, I would say, like very meta or if you're chasing a game. Now, you will probably need to make a couple of positional changes here because you're only going to have, you know, Highness in there who can't play. He only can play as a CMF, an AMF. So if you do have a hybrid player that can play AMF and CMF, that's that's essentially what it's going to be. But that's what a lot of people are using now. That's what a lot of the top rank are using. So um, they'll switch into a five. So they're suffocating you when, you when you have the ball and they're just shutting down every opportunity that you have of attacking. And then they're hitting you with three center forwards or three really attacking players on the, on the off, right? With the way the gameplay is at the moment, long ball counter is always going to be the meta because it's so narrow. You don't need to play out wide. You can have a lot of fun out wide, but that is essentially why uh, Arteta is so big and popular at the moment. And if you have Alonso or if you have the Champs, quick counter versus long ball counter, I'll do a video on that. There's slight variations to it. But the big thing with Arteta is for certain players, he's going to be given the boost to tight possession and acceleration. So for the case of Messi here, it's not going to make a difference because he's got 104 tight possession and his acceleration is 98. But for players that like are going to be, you can tweak a little bit. You're going to get that 95 acceleration on Highness there. You're going to have that 91 tight possession. Even with a player like this, if you were to take one off the dribble in here, you're still going to have 90 tight possession and that frees up that you're able to give him something else. So for example, you could give him that or you could give him one more aerial strength. You could give him a couple of more into jumping and it just kind of frees up a few more stats that now you've got a highness that has 88 jumping with 90 physical contact. So it's not so much going to be game changing in terms of the stat increase, but it does make a big difference for certain cards. So that's why people are going to use it. So that is it for me, lads. That is Arteta. I'm not going to complicate the video too much. Hopefully you saw with the clips, long ball counter. I will do a video long ball counter versus quick counter. That's probably the biggest one I get asked. So if you want to see that, please do like and subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below. Did you get Arteta? I think it's too steep. Honestly, my final thoughts on him. I got him, obviously, we got donations to get him on stream. I, I, I think he's just, yeah, I don't like the long ball counter meta, lads. I just think that it's up to Konami to actually balance the gameplay more. One touch passing, touching goals are just way too, way too overpowered at the moment. Like, they're just unbelievably overpowered. Just do a test for me, right? The next three or four matches you play, or the next five or six goals that you concede, just make a little mental note of it yourself as to how many are in around the box and similar to the clips I just showed you to start of the video. Because that's where the meta is, and that's what most people have to revert to, and most people just naturally go back to it. Even me, somebody who prides myself uh, on playing out wide and scoring a, a variety of goals and playing as much non-meta as I possibly can, you do still fall into it because the game pushes you invisibly. It pushes you invisibly as if like there's a hand guiding you to play that quick ticky taka. So let me know what you guys think. I will talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you in a bit. Peace.